Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Today we are starting the front suspension on Project Dale, so stay tuned. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be tearing apart the suspension in the front, upper and lower control arms. I got new upper control arms, coil spring, new spindle, and new ball joint for the lower and new bushings for the lower. The problem is, is the lower control arm, I don't have the tools I need here to get it apart, like the ball joint press and uh, the ability to have a one and an eighth socket to spin the nuts off the end of the control arm. So what we're going to do is we're going to catch you up to date on how far we are here on the driver's side. When we come back from the shop from getting the two lower control arms reassembled with new bushings and a new ball joint, then we're going to tackle the other side. So here's where we are so far on the driver's side. So right now we've disconnected the brake, we've disconnected the uh, tie rod here, as well as we've got the upper, lower, and the spindle out of, the play, out of place. And there's what's left of all that. The upper control arm is ready to go back in. We'll get the nuts back on that. And I saved some of the shims that fell out for the alignment guys when they go to do the alignment. They'll be able to shim that up as necessary. So like I said, we're ready for reassembly with the exception of the lower control arm. I've got to get that uh, taken out to the shop as well. Uh, we've got to tear apart the other side. So you know how far I've gotten over here. Let's go over to the pasture side and we'll start disassembling in the same order. Okay, so we're over here on the passenger side suspension and the order in which you're going to want to tear things apart in is you're going to want to take the brake caliper off then you're going to want to loosen up the wheel bearing, take that nut off because that's what holds your rotor in place. Haul the rotor off, then you can come over here and get rid of that tie rod, pull that out of the way, and your sway bar is connected to the lower control arm. So you're going to take that off. Then you can come over to the other side, get rid of that shock, and then this is where the tricky part comes into play. Get the lower ball joint off. In this particular case, we're replacing the entire upper control arm and spindle. So we'll be able to take those off in one piece. But you got to get the lower ball joint off. And in the, before you do that, get your jack underneath the lower control arm. Because everything is going to be under pressure from the spring. And once all of this stuff is loosened up and you knock that ball joint loose, it's going to want to fling down really fast and somebody could get hurt. So... Keep your jack under there so that when the time comes, you can lower your jack down nice and easy, pull that spring out, and away you go. So I'm not going to sit here and show you step by step how everything comes apart. This is very, very basic stuff. So I'm going to do it up to some music, and you guys can follow along. Okay, so we've got the uh, two three-quarter nuts that hold the upper control arm off. It's ready to slide off, so let's take it out. Now, the last thing that we've got to do is there's two U-bolts on either side of that arm, on the lower control arm. Uh, we've got to get the bolts off that, and then we've got the lower control arm in our hand. Then we can take them both out to the shop, replace ball joints and control arm bushings, and we'll start the reassembly. Okay, so we've got the uh, lower control arms off both sides, and I've got my uh, bushings as well as my ball joints that we're gonna go out to the shop. We'll press those in, out, and then in. Right, out and then in. And uh, then we're gonna come back here and then we'll start reassembly on everything. So I'm gonna go grab a bite to eat and we'll meet you guys back out here very shortly. Okay guys, welcome back. It is Sunday morning, it's storming outside, or at least it was, it's not snowing anymore, but we're going to see if we can't get everything put back together on both sides of the truck today and get her back on the ground, on the wheels, see how this thing is going to sit with the full drop kit. Before we get started, last night I went out to the shop and I put the new ball joints in and the new control arm bushings. I watched a few videos, I mean I had a good idea how it had to happen and I decided that I found my own way 
that seemed to work better than what the other videos and I didn't even bring the camera to record it. But let me show you what I figured out and the easiest way to get those bushings out. Let's take a look. So the new bushings are already in, but if you'll notice, right on the very edge, there's a little bit of the new bushing sticking out here. Well, all I did was I took a coal chisel and I beat the inside of that down all the way around as best I could on both sides. Once you do that, you can then come over here and take your chisel in towards that lip and just kind of work your way out. Obviously, you've got to take the nuts and the washer off. But once you work that away, it practically falls out onto the bench. And putting it back in, well, that was a different story. We had to get this thing locked into a vise and, you know, parts of a ball joint press around the outer edge of the bushing and a big piece of plate steel smacking the crap out of it trying to get it back into place and we finally got it bashed up my knuckle on my thumb pretty bad it's bruised up pretty good this morning but nonetheless they're in there both sides are done the ball joint we got that in no problem today it's reassembly so let's get started so right now the first thing that we've got to do obviously is get those lower control arms back up into place this is probably a two-man job just simply because those lower control arms are so heavy so i'm going to try balancing it on the floor jack and get it at least up into place where I can get those U-bolts. If I can get the U-bolts back in, get them started. Well that seemed to do the trick, so now we're going to get our holes lined up and uh, get our other two nuts and washers on there and we'll zing that down. Okay, so we've got the lower control arm bolted into place We've got the two nuts on either end loose, just so that we can have some movability here. So when it comes time to put the actual spring in, then we'll be able to connect everything together without too much resistance. So I'm gonna go grab the spindle and the upper control arm. We'll get those two put together and then we'll get them put in place as well. Now keep in mind that that spring is keyed to sit into a little perch up here as well. So you gotta make sure that it's in both places before you start jacking. So we've got our castle nut off the lower ball joint here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take our new spindle and we're gonna drop that into place right there. I'm gonna put that castle nut back on finger tight and then take our brand new upper control arm. We're going to remove the castle nut and this little dust shield here, just like so. And that's going to sit right down in here and start holding everything back together again. A little bit of persuasion. Just like so. So one thing that I have learned by watching a fella called Godspeed Garage on uh, YouTube is that if you leave the upper control arm nuts loose on both top and bottom, then that gives you some adjustment to be able to get in there and lift this up and get those bolts tightened up on there, as well as again, give you some flexibility uh, with the control arm while you're putting everything together. So let's get those two three quarters tightened up. Okay, so we got our three quarter inch nuts tightened up here in the upper control arm and it's loose enough that we can move it around with one hand so all we got to do now is get the ball joint put into the top well it doesn't seem like our upper ball joint is going to fit in there almost as if it's too thick I wonder if easy fix to replace just the ball joint because it's just bolted in there but well what are we gonna do I'll be right back with you so let me give you a little bit closer look at what's going on so obviously I noticed that the ball joint itself wasn't going down into the spindle and I thought well maybe the spindles wrong because I checked my order and my order does say it's for a half ton not a three-quarter ton but when you come down here, you'll also note that the threads aren't even coming down through the whole way. 
So then that got me thinking, what about the original? Does the original fit the spindle? So this is what I did. Pulled that off, took the original and put it in and it fits down inside the hole and there's plenty of thread on the bottom side. So the only reason why I wanted to replace the upper control arm was because it was cheaper to do all of this as one unit than buy just the bushings. So there's really nothing wrong with the upper control arm that was stock except the bushings are cracked. So what I'm going to have to do is get this straightened out. But in the meantime, just because I want to finish this project, I'm going to put the original upper control arm back on and we can change it at any time, even if it is just the bushings. So I want to get this thing down on the ground. I know you guys want to see it as well. So uh, an upper control arm and or a ball joint later on down the roll road is not that big of a deal. So let's get this one off. Let's put the original one back on, start putting things back together. Okay, we got the upper control arm in place. Don't forget to cross over your brake line from over here on the right to the back side because the line actually goes underneath after it mounts to the side here. It'll mount like so, and then it comes over underneath everything uh, before you put it all together. So let's get this back into place here. <clears throat> okay. So we've got that finger tight. We've got the bottom ball joint finger tight. Let's get the tie rod on there. So where we stand now is we'll get all of our joints tightened up, tie rod, upper and lower ball joint. Back there, we've got our sway bar link and bracket to put back on. Then we can start hooking up our brakes and we'll be finished. We'll put the tire back on and uh, we'll go over to the other side and do the same thing. So when we come back, we are going to drop this thing on the ground. All right, guys, the time has come. We've got the front wheels and tires back on. Jack stands are out. We're getting ready to drop this thing down. So let's do it. Well, there you go, guys. The front end is lowered at least four inches in the front. We may still cut a coil out of the front spring just for the sake of getting it to level out a little bit better with the rear end once we get that situation figured out as well. But man, I am some impressed with the stance on that. The top of that tire is right about the bottom of the fender. And that's exactly what I was looking for. When this thing's going down the road, she's going to be low. So the only thing left to do as far as the aesthetics of this vehicle is maybe at some point some wheels and tires. Now I'd love to have some Detroit steel uh, Delrays, some 18s, maybe 20s, I don't know, but they're expensive. They're like well over 350 bucks American. Uh, you do the Canadian math and taxes and shipping. I'm looking at two grand to get into a set of those if I want to go that far on this truck. So we might hold off on that when I can go to American Racing and get a set of torque thrust probably for well under half that. So at the end of the day, we've still got a little bit left to do on this thing. There's a, a checklist that I've made of some things I've got to correct. So which is the upper ball joints and uh, control arm bushings as well as the brake hose. It's not quite long enough. It seems to be rubbing up against that upper ball joint. So we're gonna have to take some slack out of that a little bit. And uh, we're gonna have to figure out a few other little things. So anyways, that's gonna be it of this episode of Lowering Project Dale. So I am getting the warning light on the old GoPro. So it's time to get ready to close this thing up. Remember guys, Thursday evenings is the Car Guy and Six Fan Show. This week, it's going to be on Straight Six Fans page. I'll put a link right here over to him. Please go over and give him a subscribe. And uh, that way you'll get notified when we upload a new video or when we go live for the Car Guy and Six Fan Show. This week, we've got a guest that you're not gonna wanna miss out. Something that's gonna help all you YouTubers out there who have channels, help grow your channel. An old car auto guy merch like this one right here is available at the first link in the description box below. I hope you can head on over there, check out my merchandise, and maybe support the channel in more ways than just watching these videos, commenting down below, and giving a thumbs up. 
Stay focused on the windshield, not the rear view mirror. I love you guys. God bless. We'll see you in the next Dale Truck video.